This is Let's Talk About Magnum P.I., the podcast from fans for fans of Magnum P.I. Hi, you guys. So we've got Tracy and Jen, who yep. are MacGyver fans. We are lending our show to the MacGyver fans today. Hi. 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 I mean, the reason why we're lending it is pretty obvious. It's our sister show. And... Yeah. Uh, we want to try and help save MacGyver, or at least give them a voice to try and help save MacGyver. Because we have a little bit of a platform. Tiny bit. A little bit? Oh, a little bit. I, don't, I actually bit. don't know how big your guys' platform is, but I'm, I'm so yeah. grateful that you guys yes, invited so, us yes, on. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Teeny. <laughs> but, you know, it, it is awesome because, like, I don't know what Magnum's going to do this year with MacGyver not yeah. being before it. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. There's a lot of crossover fans that, you know, watch both shows. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with it being, like, sister shows, and, and it makes sense. Everybody was kind of waiting for a crossover. I was waiting for a crossover. Yeah, no, there's, there's yeah. plenty of people waiting for the crossover. For crossover right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we know they're same universe, right? Like, because, like, they, like, Mag- I don't know what Magnum's crossover was, but we know, you know, like, MacGyver crossed over with Hawaii Five-0, which is oh, crossed right. over with, like, NCIS, you know. Which is crossed over with Magnum. Yeah. Magnum and Five-0 have crossed over. So, definitely okay. potential there. <laughs> Super I still see it. I mean, why would they not try and invite the MacGyver guys anyway? I mean, yeah, they could, I guess. I don't know. Um, well, I guess there was a crossover with NCIS Los Angeles and one of the guys from Hawaii Five O after the after Hawaii Five O ended. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and with you guys, one of the um, one of the Hawaii Five O uh, guys was on MacGyver after the show ended. Yeah, Jorge Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it but, did feel like a blink and you'll miss it kind of situation to me, at least. So, so the funniest thing is, and I don't know if Tracy knows this, but like I came into the MacGyver fandom only about a year ago. Um, I started mm-hmm. watching it during the pandemic, and yes. um, for as involved as I am in this entire Save MacGyver thing, mm-hmm. I have not actually seen all the episodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God. Neither have I. Yeah, I've yeah seen fair to so. <laughs> I've seen some. Uh, I gotta be quite honest. I only started watching when Russ Taylor joined the show. Okay, fair. Okay, so yes. I've been since day one. So I guess I'm. <laughs> You're the original. <laughs> I'm the original <laughs> one here. Yes. <laughs> I just gotta say, Henry and Cusi can make me watch a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and he was he was fantastic to talk to. He was just a fantastic mm-hmm. man. <laughs> so oh, I talk to you. understand that. Uh, yes, please. I was on the panel for the the hosts for the um because we we interviewed him for the MacGyvercon that yeah. is yeah. starting this weekend and and people are, um are going to be able to watch the videos like purchase the panel mm-hmm. videos until uh, September 23rd. Mm-hmm. Um so there is a panel with Henry Ian Cusick where we took fan That's questions. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Did you guys awesome. organize that? We did. Yes, it was absolutely insane so like i'm I, okay first of all i'm going to give a huge shout out to the winona Earp fans because they are a fandom that knows how to try to save a show because this is their second time trying to save winona Earp. and um when save macgyver started tracy i don't know if you know this i contacted some winona Earp fans to to find out mm-hmm. like ways to save the save a show yeah. mm-hmm. and one of the things that they came up they had uh talked about that they had done was fundraisers um that were like live events and um it just kind of morphed so like it, it's really hard to get people especially actors or writers or whatever in hollywood mm-hmm. pinned down for something like a live event yeah. mm-hmm. and obviously we have just gone through all these lovely technical issues <laughs> <laughs> um and we were we were so scared about um mm-hmm technical issues and trying to do um something live and trying to even get excuse me anyone to be able to do uh something live that we uh switched to doing a pre we decided to do a pre-recorded like convention style panel um which a lot of cons have done since covid started and um yeah it just kind of evolved from there like once we actually switched it from being the potential of a live event 
uh, to something pre-recorded, it was overwhelming how many people like actually came out and were like, we would love to do this, especially because now we were doing it for charity um, right. instead of, you know, going back to the campaign. Um, mm-hmm. The majority of the money is going to Cancer Research Institute. Um, and it was just absolutely overwhelming. The first person was Rhett Elaine, who is the technical consultant on MacGyver. He's a physics professor. And um, he did, like, all, like, the science stuff, you know, and um, but just from there. But it, like, snowballed, like, and, we, I mean, we were very persistent. Like, it wasn't me who was doing the contacting <laughs> moves, some of the other uh, lovely women. But I, it was just absolutely astounding. Like, we, um, we got five of the stunt performers only, like, a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were like, let's yeah. do this. So we were <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just absolutely flooring that once it became a uh, pre-recorded event like how many people were like yeah we can do it and we would love to do it and um you know how grateful they were to the macgyver Mm -hmm. fans for you know all the work that that we've been doing to to save the show Mm -hmm. sorry Mm -hmm. i babbled no no, you're (laughs) doing you this is a cause that deserves some babbling (laughs) and this is what you guys are here for right exactly Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're here for a guy who are talking about your efforts, which are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, think we're, I, mean, I can even, speak, like for Jen, I think we are truly amazed at how the response has been for everything that we've attempted to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, I personally am myself. I mean, the, these individuals are devoting so much time to to a show that I, par- I personally have never been part of a fandom to save a show. This was my first one. But Every day, you know, individuals, I'm emailing, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and what else can I do? And it, it's truly amazing, because we are now, like, four Almost months. five months. Yeah, we're, like, four and a half months, yeah. We're close to, yeah, we're closing in on the five-month mark, and it's still going as strong as it did when we first started. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Which is awesome. I've, I've been part of a Save the Show thing for, like, three times. Once mm-hmm. it failed. But we tried. <laughs> you tried. Yeah. Yeah, um, I actually did one way back when I was, like, a teenager when X-Files was canceled. <laughs> and, you know, back when you had to, like, hand, like, I hand wrote a letter and everything. Mm-hmm. I even got, like, a response from Fox. And and that time it worked. Like, they, they saved right. the X-Files. I was way back, too, when I was a teenager. Uh, the show called Primeval got canceled. Oh, I that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I still remember to this day how baffled I was that a German TV channel helped save it. Because, like, mm-hmm. it, it was really popular in Germany. It's, mm-hmm. an, it's an English show and, and really popular in Germany. And apparently we just decided, here, take our money, do another season. Ended up being two two new seasons and a spin-off from Canada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. awesome. You know, um... I don't know if you guys heard today, like, Manifest, which is an NBC show, just got mm-hmm. picked up by Netflix for heard, one yeah, final yeah. season, which, you yeah. know, obviously gives gives us so much hope. Uh, I don't I don't know about Magnum, because I, I don't personally watch it. Don't take that as an affront. Um, I know no, that MacGyver, no, no. though, like, we were floored by the international fandom. Mm-hmm. There, I, I run the website, and we've had access from over 100 countries. Mm-hmm access to the Save MacGyver website, which is yes. absolutely astounding. Like, um, we were talking about, you know, time zones and stuff. Some of the key people who, who started um, a lot of the stuff in the campaign came from um, Brazil, Israel, South Africa, uh, France, uh, Switzerland, UK, Canada, Argentina... I'm probably missing some of them. Like, the, like it was just absolutely, yeah. like, flooring to us. I'm surprised you didn't mm-hmm. mention Germany, because unlike... There Magnum, are there are quite a few fans in Germany. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, I was going to say, unlike Magnum, uh, MacGyver had, like, a prime TV spot in Germany up until the mm-hmm. very end, and it had a huge um, advertisement for the finale and everything. So, what? Um, it did? Yeah, so we it did! It did! Okay, did we, we didn't, guys we hear, nothing. like, what happened, though, like, in the U.S.? They, no. like, glossed over it. 
They're mm-hmm. all like seri- like series finale was in like the tiniest little oh, yeah. font. Oh, they did with they all did. Those words right. and stuff. Like it was right. swept under. They did. They um. They actually told. So Monica Maser was the new showrunner who came in during season five, mm-hmm. and um, she did not find out that the show was canceled until about three weeks before um, the show was essentially ending. She was just about to go into post production for the final episode. They had already filmed. The yeah, final they, episode of the season mm-hmm. as a season finale. Uh-huh. And they that's when they found out. So they had, you know, limited time, Lovely. budget, and energy to mm-hmm. to create a series finale out of yep. the season finale. It was supposed mm-hmm. like when you watch it, you can see it's a clear jumping off point for more seasons. Right. It is, mm-hmm. it is, definitely is. Right. I, mm-hmm. I saw it because I watched Magnum after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, I was going to say I saw the end of it because the Magnum the lead in. I, it, it's usually like I got up midway through uh, MacGyver sometimes and watched the end of MacGyver and then watched the Magnum finale. Uh, well, the Magnum finale. Was it the Magnum finale? No, it wasn't. No, I think Magnum was. No, it happened about week. two weeks yeah. earlier. Or, yeah, yeah. Two, two weeks, no, I think. Later. I think it was later. I think it was about two, three weeks. Yeah. Anyway. I remember. Yeah, I remember remember that. I think it was before that. It was 5-0 that MacGyver was before that. Yeah, it used to go. Yeah, yeah, they were both MacGyver. uh, Yeah, it was 5-0. They were both shows, but yeah. And I saw It used to go MacGyver, 5-0, Magnum was the lead-in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then 5-0 ended, and they put Magnum right. in the spot. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. That was a little bit similar, but, like, way worse than what happened to 5-0. Because they, too, wrote a finale that was essentially a jumping-off point for more seasons. And right. We all yeah. know what happened there. But at least at that point, they had, ten, was it 10 seasons under their belt? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. MacGyver had two full seasons, and, mm-hmm. or, well, maybe three full seasons. Three, Tracy three Maron, full seasons. Three full, yep. And then yeah. four and five were butchered half, like, essentially right. half seasons. Right. Yeah. Um, so right, because of COVID. Yeah. So for yeah. someone to say five seasons, I'm always like, no, it was like four. Because yeah. it was, you know, because they were so, they were short seasons. And then when you had, you know, for Monica to come in in season five and have to, she actually only had seven episodes of her own, mm-hmm. but she had to intermingle them with the previous showrunner who already had the vision. So we never got to see Monica's true vision. That was what the end of MacGyver was supposed to be. Her jumping off point for the following season to give us her vision. And unfortunately, that's one of the reasons I think for most fans were, you know, we sort of don't understand this and we're fighting so hard because we just assumed, we had an assumption that this would, you bring a new showrunner in like this, you give them a chance to show you bring in a big do. name yeah. showrunner too. You know what I mean? Right. Monica hey. wasn't like a low name. Like you know, right. she's a woman of color. She mm-hmm. you know has high billing on things. You know, like you yeah. know, gentrified. You know, is a huge yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then for all of a sudden, for her to be told, oh, okay, and you know, it just it just never made any sense to any of us. I think we still oh, can't comprehend it. Sense. Yeah, I to this day don't understand where the hell that cancellation came from. I understand. 5 full on understand that I don't know mm-hmm. where MacGyver came from because no. again it was hugely advertised mm-hmm. in Germany it had a prime spot yeah. um, it, it, you know like, in the US it had almost no advertising but uh, it won its yeah. time slot every week yeah. um, which the 8pm Eastern Friday night time slot in the US is a very very tough time slot mm-hmm. yes, so without advertisement mm-hmm. to consistently have yeah four to six million viewers mm-hmm. and i think at the beginning of the season it was closer to six million viewers but by the end of the season it was still four plus million right. viewers and for it to be canceled was highly unusual mm-hmm. and then for them to for cbs to also then go and take shows that had smaller viewership um, I, I'm not going to name the names, but smaller right. viewership and put them on Paramount Plus for new mm-hmm. seasons, right? Mm-hmm. But not MacGyver, mm-hmm. which had mm-hmm. more viewers. And when you yeah. have, and when you have media sites like you know, if, if you follow, one of the assumptions for us was you know, no media site had said that this show was in trouble. You know, and usually you can tell. You know, you see ratings decline or actors leave. Yeah, yeah. And you have some type of an idea. We had nothing. Every every site in the U.S. Said this was 
a, a shock to everybody. They had no, yeah. this was just going yeah. to continue. It wasn't going to be a problem. But then and when fact, ET Canada, when, yeah. when the news broke, ET right. Canada, one of the, the anchors or whatever on it was uh, honestly shocked because he was like, mm-hmm. at, in, in the industry, like there were no indications that it should be canceled. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, and then for them, I mean, the promotion had always lacked from it. But when we found out, like, you know, in February, they had announced that they were, CBS had announced they were canceling a couple of other shows. So, and they had their time to kind of say, okay, we're, we're moving on. And they had time to write their finale. This was a complete, like, okay, all of a sudden it's done. And there was never any promotion to the end of it, like the other shows received. None of it seemed like normal. And then after that, when you would go to like Friday nights and you'd see reruns, it's nowhere on anywhere for reruns. It wasn't rerunning anything in the summer, but yet the other shows that were canceled are running. There's one actually on tonight in the U.S. that, that was canceled. And so like, we will, I will mention that like one of the, th- the one of the hurdles that yes. MacGyver has that other shows don't have is that there is an open lawsuit against mm-hmm. um, CBS yeah. for, uh, based on the rights. So we do know we a lot of us in the fandom have been following this lawsuit very closely, particularly this summer um, before the cancellation. They've started like there was an uptick in like court hearing dates mm-hmm. and whatnot and, and yeah. things being filed and whatnot. Um, so, you know, there is that insanely big hope that the court case is is what's going to mm-hmm. propel MacGyver. And, and be able to save us once the court case is done. Because the problem with the court case is, since it is dealing with the rights of the show, and when the rights mm-hmm. get complicated, right. um, it's not that CBS right now could even just go and sell the rights to another streaming service like Netflix. Or um, mm-hmm. currently, IMDb TV has picked it up as uh, under essentially syndication rights. We didn't think that that was possible. We thought that industry standard was 100 episodes to receive syndication rights. Uh, but recently, uh, August 1st, actually, in the United States, at least, um, IMDb TV, which is owned by Amazon Prime, uh, has has streaming rights. So people can watch all five seasons of MacGyver for free mm-hmm. on IMDb TV, which we've obviously, as a fandom, been continuing to stream as much yeah. as possible to show the popularity of the show and that they should see it. <laughs> Plus, the show itself is very popular on Paramount Plus, yes, where it's airing. So, but but the bringing back to the lawsuit part, it was very coincidental because the lawsuit was announced around the fourth of April here in the states, and on the seventh of April, the show was canceled. Well, so, I heard that. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe announce announce to the public the the court the the case right. itself started in twenty eighteen. Right. But I think that's when we really started to see that there was the litigation was coming a little bit yeah. more more prominent and mm-hmm. things like that were going to start occurring over the summer, you know, more and more like hearings and such. So most people are assuming that the lawsuit was a huge factor here. And we are hopeful, as Jen said, that once we get, you know, hope, hopefully there'll be a settlement before that. But if not, there's an October supposed to be an October trial. So we're hoping once we get past that point, it's going to be a little bit easier where we just keep the pressure on until that point. And, and, and it you looks know, like you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Even, even, mm-hmm. um, so we've done a lot like to keep, I don't know if you guys have, have kept up with how, how Save MacGyver has, you know, made, made waves. Um, mm-hmm. we've had two rounds of billboards so far within the States. We tried to go international. Yes. We, we've, we've been having trouble. No, no offense to, we love our international fans, but uh, most other countries don't have a lot of billboards and, America does, and it, you know we want to get the word out. But and right. billboards are great, but it's hard to get them. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> even in Canada, we actually had one. We had two set up for Canada, Canada and yep. they like failed, <laughs> and we yeah. were so upset. Where? The where? The where in Canada? Uh, one was um, Hamilton outside. Yeah. Of, oh God. <laughs> so there wasn't a huge selection. That was the issue. There wasn't a huge selection. The other one, the other one was on the Ontario side of Niagara Falls. Falls. Okay, yeah, that's more visible because I was going to say Hamilton's yeah. like teeny, mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah. 
to be fair, this company we were we've been working with Blip um, Billboard, and they I, I, like Tracy said they don't have like a ton right in Canada. Canada. They have a presence in Canada. It's just not very mm. huge. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pro um, tip: Go check out Astral Media. They're the ones who have like a lot of the rights to the billboards in Canada. Yeah, wait, who is this? Astral Media. <laughs> Astral Media. A- like Astral. A S T R O. Uh, no, Astra, like S T. Like A S T R A L. Yeah, I think so. Astral Media. I think it is. I'm not writing this down at all. I'm not about to text the the Michelle, who's head of billboards. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we were just talking about our third round of billboards. Yes, we were. As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> um, but we've, we've actually sent PR packages um, to... Mm-hmm. Oh, Tracy, how many studios did we send it to? We sent it to roughly around 27. That included press and different um, execs at various studios, networks... You know, just to, even streaming services, just to, you know, get the word out, like, even for the press to start covering more about, I mean, initially the press were covering the campaign, and then that's kind of subsided a little bit, but we just kind of wanted to make people, you know, aware of what our continued efforts are, you know, obviously a lot, we've done a lot with charities, the blood drives all that money and such for for charitable stuff, because we did want to make it into something more about than just saving the show, and so, you know, partly for Jen's idea of what the blood drive and such, we needed to make it about what the show was about, you know, to give back. And, you know, because like you said, I think, you know, for us, it's not, it's more than a show. And we needed to show that to everybody, that it is more than just a TV show that we're trying to save for various reasons. We all have our reasons for what we want to do it for. But the charity was sort of at the heart and soul of everything. That's awesome. Did you guys try Mm -hmm. to go to international, um, show oh god no show um stations um so we uh we uh, we tried so like we we press wise we sent out information to um blogs and and entertainment Mm -hmm. you know shows and and um as many as we could find like writers like you know like you would find like in a newspaper or whatever Mm -hmm. um or entertainment sites uh it is, you know, it's hard. It's a small, it is still a smaller show, right? And internationally, like, yeah, it may have have uh, a lot of fans, but it just, we got a couple hits in the UK, and that was, that was about it. Um, we didn't get as much as we had hoped, which was disappointing. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. It was. I know. We do. I uh, wanted to have things. ideas, though. I <laughs> mean, yeah, yeah. 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 Love one, of, one of the um, the challenges, though, for us is the social media aspect because the, primarily the audience for MacGyver skews higher, like older, and a lot of like older individuals yeah. aren't necessarily on Twitter. They're not on Instagram. So we've tried Facebook with Facebook ads because we find that that's where a lot of that audience is. So we we're did, trying. We to did get everything. quite a good. Yeah, we did with on Facebook. on yeah. Facebook. But we're so we're trying to do like different things with like the press kits and stuff to get the word out there to individuals who aren't on social media because there I'm telling you right now I can tell you there's probably quite a few people who don't know the show's been canceled. We yeah, still yeah. see, we still mm-hmm. hear from people that oh like so and so they didn't know that was canceled. What are you talking about? Like because it was never advertised that it was canceled per se, mm-hmm. so nobody knows. <laughs> they're expecting fall and they're like, well, why isn't you know that on the list? Why isn't this on the list? It's canceled, you know. It's, it's it been canceled. literally the the biggest hurdle um, mm-hmm. that we've been going over. Like I learned, I have learned so much about advertising <laughs> think, <options> yeah. <laughs> in the last four months because I was trying to come up with like the most out there ways to get to our target audience, and mm-hmm. there is no good way because there were four million people watching it weekly, but most of them probably don't know that the show was cancelled. Yeah, right. if it was swept under mm-hmm. the rock, like you said, of course. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it was when they first announced it, and they, they advertised, they announced it on a Wednesday, and they had a show airing that Friday. And it came up, and it just said, stay tuned for the last two episodes. <laughs> and that was it. And it was wow. like, uh, okay, but people thought wow. that meant for the season. Yeah. You know, it was just what it was supposed to be. And then 
then you would see something maybe on Instagram, but like you said, series finale was so small. You know, it was never promoted in that way to give you that opportunity. And then, of course, you know, everybody gets the company speak and, you know, it's like, well, we're giving it a proper ending. No, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, you truly mm -hmm. did not give it the proper, that you did, you afforded to other programs that have been on, especially for something that's been on for five years. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have assumed that you would have had a little bit more, you know, loyalty to that program than you yeah. would to say, like, something that's only been on for half a season or a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I think, where our disappointment also came in. And we just sort of channeled that more into where we're going to fight. <laughs> I would say it was a little funny. So, um, you know, we've also learned a lot about, about how the media works, right, mm -hmm. um, when we've been doing this campaign. And, um, you know, there were... <laughs> You, you get some articles out, like, essentially, we got no good reason, right, for a long time. Right. And then, Tracy, do you remember when media upfronts came? I think that was, like, in... Oh, yeah, yes. That, that was... And that so was we, day, we, um, we, had a we made a on. huge stink. Like, the Sun oh. Giver mm -hmm. fans were, like, everywhere on oh, CBS's stuff, um, telling them to, you know, save MacGyver. That, to the point where Deadline... Was it Deadline? No, it wasn't but, Deadline. Is it TV line? One of them it, posted it, an article. I think Deadline saying, posted the article. Essentially saying MacGyver was canceled because of falling ratings. And we're like, mm -hmm. no, the ratings didn't fall. Like, we, like, literally, like, right. went on, like, when they posted it to Twitter, like, we went on there in the comments. And, like, MacGyver fans were, like, giving them hard numbers <laughs> yeah, yeah. of <laughs> ratings. Like, that mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Please. Right. Like, did you ask, like, the proper questions? Like, right. did you ask, like, why was MacGyver canceled? Or did you ask, like, like which is very open-ended versus, like, another question. Mm -hmm. They came out with another article that same day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with <laughs> quotes from the head of CBS being like, no, like, MacGyver's, like, ratings. Blah, blah. And we were like, okay, yeah, whatever. You're just, like, lip service now. <laughs> and we were just, right. like, and we just, mm -hmm. like, completely discounted everything that they said. Because we were like, that doesn't make sense it, did. it doesn't i remember I, I kept checking magnum's ratings for obvious mm -hmm. reasons because i won, yeah. won in another season <laughs> right. and the guy was right there right. on the list and it had just the natural way of how ratings work in a season there was no right. obvious fallings of ratings mm -hmm. just nope. like the normal fluctuation Mm -hmm. it, it, it looked really fucking solid even more, more solid than 5.0 was at that point i think yeah mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and one of the shows, like, I, I kid you not, one of the shows that they moved to Paramount, or that they were going to move to Paramount Plus, I think, did Evil end up going to Paramount Plus? It or did. did. they end up canceling? But they, okay. they also signed a uh, deal with those who produce Evil for the next five years or whatever, CBS. So, of course, they're going to move that show. Because they signed because, up with those producers. But, like, the ratings for that show, like, by the season mm -hmm. finale were under a million. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. I have And even like no hate that. on the show. Like we are not hating on the show, but right, like it, not. it is very confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And frustrating. I, right. Yeah. <laughs> I've never even heard of that show. Right? <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a uh, Silence of the Lambs prequel. Is that it? Uh, that yeah. One? It is supposed to be something like that. But it only was originally on air for like. Oh one. no, is that Clarice? That was Clarice. That was Clarice. Clarice. I think Clarice. Clarice, the they were going like to move. This. They were going to move Clarice to Paramount Plus, but that fell through. That was so they had Michael Emerson. I think I don't know. I forget. I didn't I watch it. any of those. Yeah, I don't. Who I, who I only know I because of Lost, which is how I know. <laughs> how you know Ian? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Not me. I know him from the hundred. Oh. Oh, fair. Okay. Okay, that's true. Oh, silence after that. I felt, I, I'm not even going to lie, like, um, sitting on the panel with Ian, I felt so guilty because I hadn't watched him in anything besides MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am, like, asking, like, all these questions, like, about, you know, like, the 100 and Lost. <laughs> <laughs> and he was great in Lost, not going to lie. To be so fair, <laughs> to be fair, as a former 100 fan... No loss there. That fandom was a dumpster fire. Oh, man. oh god! That fandom was a legitimate and still is a legitimate dumpster fire. Mm. Oh no! Oh, goodness. The the fandom wars were out of this world. 
Seriously, oh, you mean like what's going on with the Magnum Phantom? No, no, that that that's child's play. That's that's that's, that's calm compared I, to the. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Are wait. we talking like Voltron Phantom? Oh, <laughs> there's silence. Yeah. Yeah, that's Voltron, silent. which was a ne- was, was a Netflix show. Uh, like you had people like literally sending like death threats and stuff to like the studios. Okay, yeah, we're oh yeah, Patrick yeah. Ta- uh, is talking Voltron Phantom. Yeah. <laughs> we had that. We had that. We had death threats. We had an actor going against the showrunner. A showrunner going against the actor. Then we had. Oh lord. Uh. We had oh. queer baiting. We had queer baiting up and down, and like so yeah. many people were yeah. pissed yeah. about how that. Oh my god. Yeah. Just went we had, went through. We had uh, a part of the fandom cl- uh, latching onto a character and then making a whole mess of it while the other fandom didn't latch onto the character and was like annoyed by the character's presence in the end because it was so forth. And then there was the whole dumpster fire of the f- two main actors getting married. So, in real life. In real life. That that day, I woke up one morning and the two uh, and my friend texted me like, "Did you see that?" I'm like, "They were hacked. There's no way." Because previously, the, it, it was like, "They don't talk to each other. They hate each other." And then mm. we're like, "I married her," <laughs> and suddenly everybody was like, "He got the bitch pregnant," and this happened, and this happened, and the fandom was just like, "What is going on?" Everybody was, like, so in arms about the fucking wedding. <laughs> a real-life wedding. Oh, my God. Which, which way, I, I, yeah, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I tried to stay out of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, compared to that, the current discourse on Magnum is really calm and really, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. just a few like, rustled feathers. Yeah. Just I'm, wait yeah. till October 1st. I mean, in the end, uh, it's a little bit of engagement, so not too bad for the show. Yeah. Wow. But you know, like I, it, it's just gonna be so weird. I, was it? Is it Seal Team that's before you guys now for? Like, yeah, four, I think four, yeah. three or four episodes. It is. No SWAT, and then there. Oh, SWAT. SWAT, SWAT, SWAT yeah. I'm sorry. Seal Team went straight to Paramount Plus, so you guys have SWAT for like three or four episodes, and then you guys get some reality show before you. Awesome. What? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was SWAT the whole time. No, no it's, it's only for they three only, or four. They episodes. only made like so many episodes for SWAT for like the first four, and then they're moving SWAT, I think, to Monday or something. And uh, and you're gonna have a re- reality show. It's NCIS night is Monday, isn't it? That's. I think that's Monday. But they're moving SWAT to another day. But you're only going to have about four episodes, and then yeah, reality like three or four, three or four episodes, and then yeah, awesome. it's like some reality show. And we're like, mm-hmm. like the the MacGyver fans are like, like no, we we love the Magnum fans. Like we're not, you know, hey, and we're like, right. that's a great lead in for Magnum, like, right? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. in Canada. We have because like so what happens with um in Canada is we're regulated by like uh. I can't remember what the initials are, but it's, like, the CRTC or something like that. So, what happens is, like, we get... So, like, we have CBS in Canada. We do. Mm -hmm. But if a show is broadcast on a Canadian network, we get that feed. Okay? So, and our CBS shows get split between two networks here. So, CBS... Some CBS shows are on global TV, and some... uh, Mm -hmm. CBS shows on CTV. So, like, MacGyver in Canada was on Global, and yeah. Magnum is on CTV. So, oh. our lead-in, our lead-in to Magnum was Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was our lead-in. What? In Canada on CTV, yeah. Because, and we never even, like, even if we have CBS, 99% of the time we don't get the CBS feed. The only time we'll get the CBS feed is if they're showing something different. So, like, okay, for example, like, Macy's, like, the Thanksgiving Day Parade or whatever, we'll get that because that's, like, the American programming, quote-unquote. Or, like, uh, football, like, we'll get that because it'll be, like, the American feed. But if it's, like, the same show, we get Canadian commercials, Canadian... Like promos, Canadian everything. Okay. So it's, it's like our lead-ins are weird. 
That is Our very strange. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But really, yeah. Uh, a reality show is really the greatest lead in I've ever heard. Oh, this is definitely the target audience. Yeah. 100%. Whoever did that kind of slept on. You know what I think they're trying to do, though, is opposite MacGyver at 8 o'clock is Shark Tank on ABC here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And MacGyver always beat it in viewers. Like, oh, yeah. like, I mean, it's never been a chance that it's ever been beaten. I think they're trying to say, well, okay, we can do a better reality show and do this on, like, a Friday night. But it's it's not going to, I mean, we already know MacGyver fans are not going to watch <laughs> the shows. But I, it's How not, to me, that's not a strong lead in. How is that yeah, supposed like, to work? Like, if I Germany has some really bad track record of reality shows that got cancelled for various reasons, like mid-season because racism, uh, bullying. Uh, oh, see, no, in America, we just let that go till the end, and then we just <laughs> no. yeah. an actor died. Okay, well, yeah, that, that one stopped. <laughs> that that one had that to one stop an actor just funny. fucking. I, I don't even know why he died, but he died. And so it's like, that shit's risky. Mm-hmm. That yeah. shit's really risky. What, yeah. what reality show is, 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 I don't even know if we know this. what it is. I don't think we know. Well, we were, all that it came out when they did, you know, like the, this you know, the upfronts and such it? was that it would be a reality show. Yeah, it's, and it's I'm new. So, like so the the other thing that you know we're we're grappling with, right, is like CBS has new executives, right, in place, and so mm-hmm. for them, mm-hmm. like there is no love lost for them to keep MacGyver because they weren't part of the executive team that had MacGyver. So who cares? Mm-hmm. For, like they don't really care. Like they're never gonna have like like the publicity. Like yeah, we did great because MacGyver is ours, and it was still winning the time slot, but c- because it started five years before they came in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so for them, like, they're going to care more about getting, you know, their new shows, their new, was it, uh, is it, NC- not NCIS, is it, N- is it NCIS or is it, NCIS, 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 like, for them, for the new execs, that is going to make more sense for them, because they will get the credit for that. Now, right. MacGyver being so close to, to syndication, like I said before, 100 episodes, that's where a show primarily will make its money. Like, in, in the United States, like, we were, a lot of us learned, these shows don't make a lot of money until they hit 100 episodes, and you can syndicate out those rights to yeah. other stations. Mm-hmm. And then that's mm-hmm. where it makes the money. And money. so to, to stop short at 95 episodes and to not syndicate it out to, like, mm-hmm. you know, these other stations is silly. <laughs> but I mean, you want of, that money. <laughs> a mm-hmm. lot about that, that, that cancellation just feels fucking silly. Sorry. Also, also, can we just talk about like, like Germany? Like, I saw you guys is you recently got the season four DVD set, just like we did because we got mm-hmm. it earlier in the summer. At least MacGyver gets C- DVD sets. Magnum doesn't even get that. That's fair. That's, That's fair. fair. These right? are the cheapest of the cheap um, DVD sets, and I wish I had mine sitting here. If you look at the season four America one, by the way, you turn it around to the back. Which all the seat, all of the stuff on it is just terrible they did like the mm-hmm. work they, they spent no time or an energy on it right they no, use they old photos of of mac because they haven't done a promo photo in over a year um mm-hmm. but if you look at the back of the dvd set it makes it look like the show is about russ and desi oh yeah it doesn't even look like it's about macgyver yep and there were no extras and all like there is in the german well there hasn't been extras in years but then right, like for the germany germany's dvd set Oh look god! At the back, and it actually looks mm-hmm. like it's about MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> so Germany at least did it right. You guys had promo, and you guys had right. actual like good-looking material. Oh, and it. it's on a, it's it's on a prime channel. Like this is one of the three channels that people regularly watch. Mm-hmm. Um, like the one that Magnum is on. Whereas, like, in the United States, like, CBS is, like, a major network, right? It's, it, for it us, is. It's, it's major network TV. So, like, right. it's it's still a big deal. And, mm-hmm. you know, when they brought Monica on, that was a huge deal. Because mm-hmm. in the United States, there are very few um, women of color showrunners. 
uh, on particularly on network TV. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's there's far more diversity once you get to streaming. Um, but streaming is a is a very premium service, as we have learned during this whole COVID pandemic experience. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. How many people don't have access to internet and are not able to to watch therefore streaming, where there is like more diversity? So to have brought on a woman of color showrunner to a network TV show um, is absolutely massive. But then she was only given seven episodes. <laughs> You know, like, that's just also, like, kind of a, a slap in the face. Like, she, you know, deserved more time. And to have brought in, like, the additional diversity onto the show, mm-hmm. um, you know, she brought in, in those seven episodes, she brought in non-binary representation and a transgender black woman that was right. in STEM. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Um, it, it, as we learned during this campaign, even at the very beginning, we did not realize the impact that characters like Riley Davis had on people and how many people, how many women Mm -hmm. particularly and women of color went into STEM or went into other science related things because of that character. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That representation is so important and, and to have a woman of color showrunner. um, Another thing that I learned during, during this whole um, campaign was that uh, when Monica became showrunner, uh, I think it was during filming of the final episode was the first time a woman held a camera behind the scenes to film on MacGyver. First mm-hmm. time in five seasons. Okay, that's wow. messed up. Mm-hmm. It is, it's wow. incredibly it's messed, messed up yeah. because it is a man's world still as a mm-hmm. woman who tried to go into the music business um, to be on the, the, the behind the scenes side. Um, it is an incredibly tough field for, for any woman to be into uh, Like I've been, I'm in STEM now, but when I was in music business was the only time I was ever told to my face. I did not know what I was talking about because I am a woman <laughs> and I can guarantee that it was the same in TV. Mm-hmm. And it, for the first time in five years, just... a woman held a camera. Mm-hmm. Like that is huge. <laughs> yeah. And freaking messed up. Honest to God. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I will wholeheartedly agree with that. <laughs> um so you know that there there you go there's some more tidbits you didn't know i have no idea what it's like for magnum like um uh you know we have some female camera operators i think that's awesome and and like a lot of our uh production assistants and stuff are females and all of our makeup and hair and all that that's all female too what what about writers do you guys have female writers yeah and directors okay see and that's that's fantastic like when monica came in like Mm -hmm. she diversified the writers so much you know women of color um you know there was asian representation there was there were women of color there were just more women like it was just Mm -hmm. amazing yeah but there's also um i mean no but there's there's this this amount of you can't get away with no not as much uh diversity as Holy shit, that sentence doesn't make sense. <laughs> you can't get away not being diverse if you have a show on Hawaii. So, mm, there that's has true. To be a certain that's level true. of diversity to begin with. Otherwise, right. yeah. people will just be like, what the hell are you showing us here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ian, Ian talked yeah. about it um, a, a little bit in the panel. I don't want to give away too much because I want people to go, uh, you know, the Obviously, con yes. is yeah. for yeah. charity. <laughs> like, all, 100% of the, proce- the proceeds, you know, minus what PayPal takes out, are going towards charity. But Ian talked about that a little bit because he's in Hawaii and um, uh, working with other directors and stuff. And and that he's on, well, this this part, he talks about, because I'm on Clubhouse as well. He, uh, he talked about on Clubhouse... Um, being part of a, a group, you know, that wants to uh, have, like, productions have mostly Hawaiian natives uh, working on them to, you know, mm-hmm. get, get them work and, and whatnot. And because it's more, you know, it's their, it's their, their place, right? Like, they yeah. should be working there. Yeah. Like, if you go to, like, Chicago yeah. or you go to Atlanta, like, like when we talk to the stunt performers, like, all those mm-hmm. stunt performers that worked on the show for MacGyver live in Atlanta, they're all right. Atlanta natives, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like, it makes sense instead of, you know, if you're doing a show in Hawaii and bringing in people. Like, that mm-hmm. doesn't make as much sense. Depends, 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 depends. Right. I mean, but yeah, it doesn't make sense to, to exclusively bring people in, obviously. But, like, if, if there's, I'm gonna say it, if there's no stunt performer that 
even looks remotely like a guy like Jerry Hernandez, obviously you have to mm. bring someone in. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because yeah. he does not look like a like a native. Or or Purdy pretty, pretty doesn't look like Neil Hawaiian. She's a blonde British woman. Yeah, so. but, but there's, there's, still there's a lot of people on Hawaii that do look like them. Because it's mm. such a melting mm-hmm. pot, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a stunt performer. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. There's there's limited resources in Hawaii, but they have to use the ones that are there, obviously. Yeah, yeah. and especially yeah. you know if you're also talking about like behind the scenes and and whatnot, like you mm-hmm. don't you know people who are not on camera, like why bring in people? What use the people that are native? Right. right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they have the industry, so why not use it? And they, they, they've got to be a huge filming hub. Like, you know, we know, obviously, L.A., and I did not realize until MacGyver how much Atlanta is a huge filming hub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did not realize. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, so interesting when you, like, find out all these other places that are hubs. Yeah. 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 Vancouver Chicago, is Chicago used to be a, a hub, I was but just it's, to say it's it's expensive. Vancouver. Vancouver is literally the place where I, I I I spent like a day wanting to just see the city, and I could not save myself from some. Oh, there's a set. There's a set. There's a set. I just mm-hmm. want to go to that museum, guy. <laughs> I, I, I remember when like all the sci-fi in the world was like freaking filmed in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was. They call it Canadian Hollywood. It really is. It is. Medi- yeah. They call it Canadian Hollywood. There mm. was this one day. It was literally. I walked out of my hotel. Straight onto the flash set. I don't know. <laughs> and I wanted to go to one museum, and I could because there was a set. Uh, I decided to go to another museum. I had to walk across the set of Unreal and walked a little further, and then my really close. Thank you, the hundred. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and I remember, like, I think, like, both the Stargates were filmed there back yes, in the day. Yeah. Battlestar Galactica. I'm pretty sure Eureka and Warehouse 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Yes. all Vancouver. Yes. Steve, Steve's in Vancouver. I legitimately went to the sets there. Yeah, Steve's, Steve's in British Columbia. Yeah. 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 My, I actually, my neighbor goes to school out there, and he's studying, like, film and because it's like the place the to time. study it yeah 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 exactly so he's out there right now and i his sister just left to go uh to go move to italy actually to go to school and i went into like her going away like dinner <laughs> and everybody that was there that was friends with like her brother was like oh yeah like i'm also in movies and i'm doing this project and i'm doing this project and um they just filmed transformers in montreal and uh, one of my neighbors was, like, one of the set dressers and stuff. And, like, months and months and months ago before they filmed it, she pulls me aside and she goes, I'm like, oh, so, you know, how's it going? What are you, like, what are you up to? Because she was also staging houses for her husband who does real estate. And I was like, are you still staging houses? She goes, no, I- I'm-, I'm back doing, you know, TV. I'm like, oh, that's great. Da, da, da. She's like, yeah, yeah, don't, don't say anything yet because it hasn't been announced. But um, I'm working on Transformers. I was like, what? She's like, yeah. She goes, I just signed the contract, like, last week, and I'm going to be, like, the set dresser on Transformers. I was like, holy shit! You have to take me! I have the stumbling upon set uh, troubles here in my hometown right now. Because everybody knows the CIS stuff, right? So there's a German version of it, Tatort. And there's Tat Ortstücke, which is like an hour away, an hour and a half away. But apparently we're filming here at the moment. And I I, I just wanted to go to the doctor. What the hell? And <laughs> get coffee. What the hell? And and my bloody bridge was closed because they had to film there. I'm like, <laughs> get the fuck away. I just wanted <laughs> coffee. I will say my girlfriends, uh, a couple of friends that I, I went to school with uh, are native Hawaiians and like they actually hated Hawaii Five O because of the same thing. Like they just be like, I just want to go places, but no, they're filming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get the same thing. They do film everywhere. I get the same and, and I got uh, one of one of the people that I know from Hawaii texted me like it when I was in home office and it was like 
please keep me company. I'm so annoyed because a certain show called Magnum had a night shoot and he couldn't sleep because the lights were so fucking bright. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. The dreamer is to wake. Keep me company. I'm so like, I want to be there. I want to be on set. Like, ah, uh, cool. Not gonna happen this year, is it? No, no, not gonna happen. They asked us to happen. stay away, and we will. No, so, yeah. um, I don't even have a choice. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> poor you. <laughs> even if I wanted to come, and they were like, "Let's open up for vaccinated people," I don't count as vaccinated, despite being vaccinated. Thank you, America. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm. you don't want to come here. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Not no. right now. Not right no. now. No. I freaking miss it. I know, but not right now. No. <laughs> I I'm just want the kids back to school <laughs> and I'm just Here freaking you. out. <laughs> and especially so. now, coming back to the shows, especially right now, this is like one of the time where we turn to comfort shows and mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but the guy was a comfort show for so many people. What it was helpful cancel it there's mm-hmm. I, I feel like there's an indication that the ratings could even shoot up with the amount of fucking lockdown yeah you know it was actually incredible like when we when we were talking um to various you know people for the the panels and stuff mm-hmm. like we talked about a lot about the the covid restrictions and whatnot mm-hmm. and like even hearing about like the covid restrictions now for like um actors and actresses like going out to like audition because it's not really going out to audition right like you're auditioning via tape and then it's like then you have to pass a covid test and get a negative and then if you sign technically you're not signed officially until you show up the first day and you test negative again because if you don't test negative that second time they actually have alternates Oh, Lord. So, like, you're not guaranteed a job until mm-hmm. you test negative on set. So that's definitely a nightmare for some of the actors that I know. That's and, like consi- the, and considering this is all gig nightmare. work, right? Like, like these yeah. poor people, like, and it doesn't matter, like, what you're doing, right? Like, uh, like behind the scenes or in front of the camera, mm-hmm. it's all gig work, right? So you're only there for as mm-hmm. long as you're filming a show. So, you know, that's the other thing, right? Like, MacGyver... MacGyver's cancellation, that's like 200 people or more out of a job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. when there was no indication that they would be. Which is something yeah. that actually bothers me about the little squabbles in the Magnum fan. I'm like, I'm not going to watch anymore. I'm like, you guys love these actors. Bloody fucking watch. And even if you don't want to watch it, turn the shit on. Watch it and not get, get the views. That you love yeah. out of a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, you you ride the rough waters to to try to find hopefully the smoother sailing, right? Like, yeah, there there were many in the MacGyver fandom. Again, I came in so late, Tracy. I don't know about yep. you, but like, there were many in the MacGyver fandom that you know, season four was kind of not well done. Um, but people were trying it out, right? And they, and they watched, and they kept, yeah. but they kept watching, right? And then season five, like there were still like the muddy waters right but then it got clear once we got the monica macer episodes and it, right. you know and that was like a great turning point and because yeah. like she had this new vision and mm-hmm. but that's yeah. also like a thing i feel like a lot of shows have season four that's not that good because it's it just feels like a transition season towards mm-hmm. something in season five, I, I, I can tell you guys yeah there, there was another supernatural was a mess season four yeah, we oh. had like numerous Once showrunners percent. you know in season four there was a brand new showrunner who came in and the show deviated a lot from what it was in the first three seasons and it, that was kind of a drastic change for a lot of people f- from day one like someone who came in like j- day f- you know in season four may not have seen any change but you come in after three se- then you saw that drastic change and people were upset about it i mean it you know and some unfortunately did walk away they said I mean, we're not watching it anymore. We're you know, and they never came back. It, it's also fair. It's like if it's not no longer your show and you you can't watch, right. that's fair. Yeah, but uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, when when that occurred, you know, those that did stay 
had this idea that, you know, it's going to improve, we're going to see, you know, and then like Jen said, when Monica was brought on, it was like, this is a breath of fresh air, we're going to see something different, we're going to do, and we, you know, we went through rough patches even in season five, because we had to deal with the previous showrunners episodes that were already filmed pre, you know, right before COVID. Actually, actually, side if you go and and watch the writers panel there's some little things about monica and the team they actually had to reshoot some of that stuff okay yeah because and you know and so because it was a little bit more disjointed that was where the expectation was that well we're definitely going to see season six because you're not going to bring a showrunner in and let her go right after yes she just has a final chance to show her vision so <laughs> it you know, really it doesn't it, make sense mm-mm. None of it made sense except for, and everybody has their own theories as to why it's occurring, whatever. You know, more people tend to say the lawsuit had a lot to do with it, that it was just an easier way to say we're not going to, you know, we cancel it, then we don't have to worry about, you know, if they should lose the lawsuit, then they got to pay out. The more, the more episodes that air and they're handling, the more they have to pay out. So this way, if they just say, nope, we're at, you know, we're, we're done, we're not filming it anymore, then you know, they're not going to owe for another season. You know what I mean? If there's a rights issue there, you know, I mean, I still don't believe the ratings had anything. To, I still will no. always say that. I, I, I don't I, too. I, I think the lawsuit has a huge factor in it. And, you know, we're hopeful that things are going to go our way. Um, you know, because people, people are seeing what we're doing. You know what I mean? I, I believe people are paying attention to what we're doing. We have not been told no by anyone yet, unlike right. other shows that have, you know, somebody has come out and said, well, we're not going to, you know, we don't, don't come to us because we're not going to take that. We're not going to do this. We have not been told by anyone. No. So, I mean, believe me, with the amount of requests that we've put to Netflix, <laughs> which are over 800,000. Almost 865,000. They could have easily come out and said, look, stop, stop emailing us. Stop doing everything because we're just not going to do anything. But we do have. know, and we know, like, those streaming services, Paramount Plus and Netflix particularly, mm-hmm. know about the lawsuit, know, know about the open right. lawsuit and yes. whatnot. So it's, you, you get you get the right customer service person on the phone, you can find that information. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. a, a, as a fandom, I don't know if you guys know this, the things that we have done to date uh, is send more than 1.4 million paper clips to CBS. Um, that I heard. And, in the vein yeah. of, of other shows that yes. had what Jericho sent peanuts. Um, we, <laughs> we've, uh, you know, Tracy mentioned the, the Netflix requests, you know, we're sending emails. We are sending postcards, uh, physical postcards. Yes. Do I have any of my postcards? I do. Yes. Here's one of my postcards. Yeah. This is one that, that mm-hmm. Jamie made. Yeah. Ah, it's probably blurry. Oh. Um, <laughs> but no, it's okay. Uh, you know, we're, um, we just finished the third round of that. We, we had the blood drive and the give mm-hmm. the hashtag give back save Mac campaign. Yeah. We did, um, we actually have the support of MacGyver's original creator, Lee David Slotoff. Um, he, mm-hmm. not only did he give blood during the blood drive, which was absolutely incredible. He mm-hmm. entrusted us to doing a takeover of his social media. Mm-hmm. And he did, you know, he also sat down for a panel mm-hmm. for, for the convention to talk yeah. about the, the, um, MacGyver and, 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 you know, where he sees MacGyver going next, you know, whether it's with this uh, particular IP or not, because, you know, I mean, like there's, you know, always the potential, like if, if they can't bring back this series, you know, that they would create a new series eventually down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have so, so many things going on that, you know, People are taking notice. We've sent those PR packages. We, we have right. the billboards. So, like, mm-hmm. we we are not going quietly into the night until somebody tells us no. And, and even no then one you're has. Not going quietly. Right. Well, that's it. We're, we're not going not quietly, yet. period. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we, we really believe in, in at least getting a, one final season to wrap things up. Mm-hmm. Um, but for yeah. everything that, that the cast and crew, uh, went through over the years, like, mm-hmm. and, and to have, um, such a peaceful and wonderful season five with, with the new showrunner, Monica Meeser, um, mm-hmm. you know, they, the, the theme through the entire MacGyver con, if you guys go watch any of the panels is that mm-hmm. that entire show, the cast and the crew were all a family. 
um, you know, I heard it time and again that one of the biggest things that, that people took away from that show was like, there are shows that you could work on and it's a great show and it's super popular and, but you don't really want to be there. And you you, you get Mm -hmm. this with any job, right? You don't want to be there. But with MacGyver, people wanted to be there. They were a family. They had fun Mm -hmm. and it showed and they, they loved each other. And yeah. You know, it was very emotional for, for all of us making that convention because while the convention itself is not to save the show, it was to celebrate the show. Um, you could, you, I cried on almost every panel. Not every panel, but almost every panel. Yeah. Um, but you could, you could tell that, that that show was special to every single person who worked on it. Mm-hmm. That's my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like this is the perfect uh, way to wrap the episode up on this point. <laughs> the show was awesome and hopefully continues to be awesome into another season. Yes! Yes! Because we're not giving up, so... <laughs> yeah, we're, and, we're, and I hope... Save our MacGyver will become saved. MacGyver. Yes. Yes, hopefully yeah. there's a lot of other, other shows that... There was one show that has a final had a final season the third time now. This is the final final season now. Um so let's hope that happens for MacGyver. No, that we're not hoping for it. That happens for MacGyver. And I really hope the other Magnum fans who are were not aware of this are joining us in trying anything. Because we want that crossover, man. Yes! What? Yes! Awesome, yes. Right? Yeah. Just like I always yeah. go on, like, MacGyver takes place in Los Angeles. NCIS Los Angeles takes place in Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Why has there been no crossover? Yeah! yeah. Explain it to me. <laughs> and we know it's in the same universe, thanks to the crossovers yeah. with 5-0. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Right. So, so come on. I don't know. There's, it just, there's, it makes sense. It just makes sense, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a Magnum crossover. Definitely, definitely. definitely. <laughs> Somebody's just got to do it. Somebody's just got to do it. They just got to pull the trigger and they got to save MacGyver. Oh, yep. well, that's got to happen. And you guys are certainly loading and cocking the gun. Somebody just got to pull the trigger now. Actually, we're probably yeah. doing it with a Swiss Army knife because Mac hates guns. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the analogy, the analogy fell apart. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if I use the wrong analogy. I'm, like, guys, I'm like, wait, there's, there's a gun uh, on my MacGyver at mine. glory. It's glory. <laughs> yeah, there's not a gun on my MacGyver at mug, so... So thank you guys for being on, and thank you for having us. Please thank you so much. You guys are our sister show. Yeah, I know. Fandom. <laughs> because we're all in the same universe together. Yes, we are. it's like we it's, are. it's like High School Musical. I feel like we're all in this together. We should be like playing in the background <laughs> or something. Like, <laughs> don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, am known, do I am known for terrible puns. So I don't. won't do it because we don't have the rights to it, Liz. I know, right? <laughs> do you know how many times I've said things like we've MacGyvered this because we? You gotta say it when it's MacGyver, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think the enti- I've, I've been saying that a lot myself in, in just everyday life. Bring this show back. Also, I'm, I really want to continue watching this show because I just started it. Right. <laughs> and that yeah. finale, that finale really. It, it was a jumping off point. It was yeah. a jumping off yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it felt the same with Five O. It was a jumping off point for another thing, but you could you could use it and wrap it up, even though it wasn't satisfactory. It could you know it can stand like that. But MacGyver and, and MacGyver, MacGyver's good too like because, because, like, as far as series finales go, it wasn't the worst, but it it needs was to, it needs definitely to continue. It needs, yeah, way too open ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even more than Five O, it was way too open ended. Yeah. No, no. We all agree. It, it felt like they dangled <laughs> the fish in front of you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> they dangled yeah. that fish of Ma- Mac actually being happy. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ow. Good oh, lord. Yeah, there's there's too many more stories that yeah. you know to be told, and that's one of the things that 
you know, we've in the campaign have told like when we send postcards, when we do, there's just so many more stories that, you know, that were starting to be told, let's say with Monica and yeah. need to continue, you know, like five O had that 10 years and they, you know, at that point, maybe you exhaust these stories, you know, and you can't go much further, <laughs> but this, this had too many, you know, I mean, green, good stories like left to do. Five O was pretty solidly cancelled because one of the one or both of the main actors wanted right. to go, and but, then you can understand. You know, once once a main actor leaves, it's very difficult to have the show. Continue. Yeah, yeah. You know, but there was I mean, none Maga- of that here. MacGyver and Magnum both shows in in the same situation would certainly not work anymore, and I would get that they would have to cancel it then because right. MacGyver without MacGyver it, it doesn't necessarily work. Hawaii Five right. O without MacGyver could technically work. Magnum without Magnum would not work. No, no not at all. <laughs> no. Skype crashed on me there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, you're very <laughs> still there. <Yeah. laughs> I, was, I was probably very still there, yeah. No, it just, like, winked right out of existence. Oh, I think Skype wants to tell us that it's really time to wrap it up. <laughs> I guess. Eve, yeah. we still have to do the spoiler section... Take it away, Liz. We have a spoiler section. Yes, as always, people, if you don't want spoilers, turn it off now. Because this is the only thing that's going to happen for the rest of the episode. (laughs) Liz, it's your turn. (laughs) I love how this is always me. (laughs) You're the one that collects them. (laughs) (laughs) So, what do we have this week? Um, So, we found out that the episode title for 406 is called Devil on the Doorstep. Um, which, personally, I have quite a few theories about, but I need to tell you the other spoiler before we get into the theories about that. But, yeah. as many people in the fandom already know, the writers dropped a bombshell yesterday in the I'm so excited for it. TV line. Is TV line? It is TV line, right? Interview uh, or article saying that we were getting Chantal Toy. I don't know if she, if I'm saying her last name correctly, uh, who's gonna play Leah, who is Magnum's girlfriend. So apparently, when he is in Kenya, Magnum decided he's gonna start secretly dating Katsumoto's partner. So. That should be very, very interesting. I think I, a lot think of I saw fans so talking about that today yeah. on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 you would have. Yeah. yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Was, you probably did. Yeah, yesterday, <laughs> or yesterday or the day before that. Yesterday. Um, basically, you come into the fandom with, the, you yeah, you know, the pizza guy walking into the building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the fire. And the fire. And, the fire and people are on the floor and fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was me walking onto Twitter after these news. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I was at work, and my phone just exploded, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> and then um, she called me. <laughs> yeah, and then I called me, I called her out on my lunch break. But, um, yeah, so I'm interested to see how it goes, and I'm super happy about it being Chantel, because she's a Montrealer. She's so, so cute. You know, she's Aww. so cute. Yeah. Like, and, within uh, a picture of her, she's very pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, so, she is. Within moments of the news, so she great. started interacting with the fandom, and she just, yeah. oh, she's God. adorable. And I'm so proud that she's a Montrealer like me. And I oh. and I was wondering, because in her bio, she has a Canadian flag. Oh. And then today, she posted in French. And I started thinking to myself, okay, Canadian flag, and she speaks French. French, it looks like. Like, could she be from Quebec? So I googled her, and not only is she from Quebec, but she's from Montreal. So, <laughs> I'm very happy, because yeah, that's kind of cool for me, because you know, Montreal like, pride. Famous bummer. There's never any famous Montreal actors. <laughs> Honestly, like, I, I felt that way. Alexandra Gray on MacGyver the, mm-hmm. uh, is from Chicago. And I was like, ah! Yeah. Oh, Chicago! Yay! <laughs> so, this I get is so it. awesome. So, do so, we have yeah. anything else? Eh, let me check my notes. That's, uh, that's like the biggest news, because if I'm in the MacGyver fandom and not Magnum fandom, and I heard about it... Right. <laughs> it's, it's huge news. It's huge news. Oh! And oh, I, actually, I do. I gotta admit something, though. 
that picture of them, I was roughly uh, thoroughly distracted by Jay Hernandez's Hernandez's biceps. biceps. <laughs> Which I always kind of get. I always get distracted by his biceps. Yeah. Oh, MacGyver, fa- MacGyver fans can relate to the. Yeah, we we the get biceps. that way about yeah. about Lucas Till. So. <laughs> but I do actually have one more spoilery thing. They did put out a casting call for uh, background groomsmen, background bridesmaids, and background wedding guests. So, Magnum Fandom put it together, episode 5, which is Till Death, is about a wedding, as we all thought it was. I think yeah. most of us kind of figured that one out pretty quickly, but that's kind of your basic confirmation if you want to kind of take it like, that way. It does kind of feel anticlimactic to have these news after the Chantal news. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I kind of, I, I, that's why I was like, do I leave with the Chantal news? I don't know. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the spoilers for this week so far. Again, as always, if you guys have spoilers that we miss and you want to share them, let us know because I am personally very hungry for spoilers. Always, uh, as Eve can attest. <laughs> I can. I can. <laughs> I feel like we just constantly have conversations of like. Me sending you spoilers, and then you responding with pictures. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> us freaking out of the spoilers. So, um, us this was the spoiler section. As always, you guys, you know where to find us. And do you want to plug yourselves, or just should we just plug the tag? Oh, um, <laughs> nice. Um, I guess I will give you guys, I'm Jen Bauer, I'm at Rights Mom on Twitter, I host the Save MacGyver website, so if you guys are interested in helping out the fandom in any way to help Save MacGyver, go to SaveMacGyver.com, mm-hmm. um, we have, like, all of the information up there, we're, you know, we're on Twitter, there's also a separate website for MacGyverCon, it's MacGyverCon.com, mm-hmm. uh, you know, even if you're not a huge fan of the show, it is kind of cool to go see some of the other panels that are behind the scenes, uh, people that you wouldn't normally see at a con. So, you know, we had all of the season five writer team, which is phenomenal. Um, we had stunt performers. We had the technical consultant, Retta Lane. We had a costume designer, Sarah Downer. Um, and we had several um, actors and stuff. So it was, it was, mm-hmm. you know, it is absolutely fantastic. And all of the proceeds go to charity. Majority are going to Cancer Research Institute. Um, Sarah Downer did choose uh, the Great Pyrenees Rescue in Atlanta, I believe, is, as her um, charity. Uh, and we have raffles as well. And again, the proceeds for the raffles are going to the same charities as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we are on Twitter or I'm on Twitter. Tracy, you can plug yourself. Um, I'm at TC Disney 629. And, you know, we, you know, we definitely want to have the Magnum fandom, you know, whatever they can do to help for us. You know, we're appreciative of anything, you know, stay tuned because, you know, we have no intention of stopping and there's just more things down the line that we'll be doing. Um, you know, and of course we appreciate this opportunity as well. Um, and, you, and know. you know, one of the biggest things, like, not everything requires money for helping, and we've told right. them, so, like, so many of the fans, yes. like, sharing, just sharing what's going on so that new eyes see it, because you don't know mm-hmm. who in your fandom might also be a fan of MacGyver, so, right. you know, sharing things like the petition or the MacGyver con or whatever, you know, seeing, like, what mm-hmm. the cool things that, that you right. know, these other fandoms are doing is just, you know, one of the best things, because you don't know mm-hmm. who out there doesn't know right. that MacGyver was canceled and may want to help, you know, you know, just going on IMDb and rating mm-hmm. the show and, right. and going and streaming a couple episodes, you know. And yeah. if you as a Mac- Magnum fan are not convinced to go help them, I'm just going to say one thing. If the tables were turned, MacGyver fandom would help us. And if Definitely. it ever comes to the point yeah. of us being canceled, that's the fandom that's standing with us, 100%. 100%. And we can learn a ton of lessons from them if ever we need to. Yeah. So, so let's walk, walk with them. 